Mark Rosengarten. Welcome to... Ask Rosengarten. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our question today comes from Mario McLean. And the question is, please explain intermolecular forces, i.e. hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole, and London forces. Also, isn't hydrogen bonding a type of dipole-dipole? I'm confused. Well, prepare to be confused no longer. Molecules attract each other just like magnets do, and for similar reasons. The north pole of one magnet will attract the south pole of the other magnet, and the stronger the magnetic fields are, the stronger the attraction between the magnets will be. Well, the same is true of molecules. Molecules have oppositely charged ends. Now, these can be permanently charged, as in the case of a dipole, like any polar molecule, or they can be temporary in the case of a nonpolar molecule. Let's take a look at some examples. All molecules, whether polar or nonpolar, contain London dispersion forces. The London dispersion force is a direct effect of electron motion through a molecule. In a molecule of diatomic chlorine, for simplicity's sake, let's take a look at an electron being shared evenly between these two molecules. Now, for an instant, that electron is on this side, and for that instant, this side is charged partially negative, but only for that instant, because in the next instant, boom, it's gone again. It's off to the other side. And the other side of the molecule is charged partially positive. Molecules can actually interact with each other in such a way that magnifies this particular effect. Now, for this instant, if the partially negative end of this molecule happens to come near the partially positive end of another diatomic chlorine molecule, well, for that moment, they're going to experience London dispersion forces, which are extremely weak attractive forces caused by the motion of electrons through the molecule, creating momentary or temporary poles. Now, all molecules have these, including polar molecules. The effects are cumulative. For nonpolar molecules, the only attractive force they have is London dispersion. The larger the molecule, not only do you have more electrons, but there's also a greater chance of a, of a momentary imbalance in the distribution of those electrons around the molecule. This can be seen most specifically when you take a look at monatomic molecules. If you take a look at the relative radii of the noble gases, this is measured in picometers, you'll notice that as you go from helium to krypton, the radius of each atom successively increases. And notice what happens to the boiling point as a result. As the atom gets larger, the boiling point gets higher as well. This is temperatures in Kelvin. And the reason for this is for the greater chance of a disparity in electron distribution around this nonpolar molecule. Polar molecules also have London dispersion forces, but that's not all they have. Not only can they have these temporary dipoles, Polar molecules, by their very definition, have permanent dipoles. In this molecule, there's going to be an uneven distribution, an asymmetrical distribution of electrons in the molecule. Why? Because hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, and the chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.2. And that means that any electrons that are being shared in this molecule are going to be pulled more towards chlorine side of the molecule making the chlorine side of this dipole partially negative and the other end partially positive. We call this arrow here a dipole moment. Now here I have two molecules of hydrogen chloride arranged so that the partially negative end of one molecule is attracted to the partially positive end of another molecule. Now as you know, the way ionic bonds work is a positive ion and a negative ion attract together. It's just a surface attraction. You can break it just by melting it or dissolving it in water. A dipole attraction is very similar to an ionic bond, only it's much, much weaker. Because instead of a full positive and negative attracting each other, all you have is a partial positive and negative attracting each other. 
And what that means is that a polar molecule, these dipole-dipole forces, are going to be far weaker than the full positive and negative attraction of an ionic bond, leading to much, much lower melting and boiling point. Now, just like with ionic compounds, now, just like with ionic compounds, when you dissolve a compound that contains polar molecules, water can break these molecules apart from each other. The water can get in here and separate this hydrogen chloride molecule from this hydrogen chloride molecule. But the one thing the water can't do, in most cases, is to break the covalent bond. Now, in the case of an acid where you have hydrogen on one side and a highly electronegative atom like chlorine on the other, water can actually break this bond apart, ionize the bond. Okay, that's in an acid. But if this was a bond between, let's say, oxygen and chlorine, that's not going to happen. Now, as far as a hydrogen bond is concerned, this is a very, very special case. And they've actually discovered some interesting things about hydrogen bonds recently. This is a molecule of water. The electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1, and the oxygen is 3.5. This gives a very strong pull, especially because oxygen having only two energy levels, those electrons are particularly close into the nucleus. So these electrons get pulled very closely into oxygen. That makes the oxygen side of the molecule partially negative, and the opposite end, along the dipole moment, partially positive. Now water is so polar, how polar is it? It's so polar that when it comes near another water molecule that the partially negative oxygen end of this water molecule will attract to the partially positive hydrogen end of a different water molecule. But it's such an incredibly strong attraction it's kind of like dipole, where it's an electrostatic attraction, right? It's like positive attracting a negative. Okay, that's part of it, but that's not the whole deal. That's the dipole part of it. But something even cooler is going on. Hydrogen bonding is actually very similar to resonance, where a bond's position can actually shift. And that's what happens here. To some degree, for most of the time, this hydrogen is bonded to this oxygen. But momentarily, this hydrogen can actually covalently bond with this oxygen. It's almost like resonance. You have a bond that's actually shifting between the two molecules. And this shifting bond, this hydrogen bond, is so strong that water molecules have incredibly high melting and boiling points for a molecule water size. In addition, this gives water surface tension so that insects can walk across the surface of it. Also, water acts as a very strong glue. If you take a piece of paper and you, put, you soak it in water and slap it on the wall, it'll stick to the wall. Water is super strong glue because of these hydrogen bonds. So a hydrogen bond is kind of like a double effect. It's a dipole attraction. It's also partially London dispersion because of the motion of electrons but it's also a shifting covalent bond where the hydrogen is actually bonding mostly to its original oxygen but sometimes to that oxygen and that temporary covalent bond makes water molecules very tough to break apart this is why water has a very high specific heat for a liquid like it is it also has a high heat of fusion and it has a high heat of vaporization and it also has a very high melting and boiling point. Again, compared to other molecules water size, water is an absolute champion. So there you go, Mario. London dispersion, temporary poles due to electron motion. Dipole-dipole attractions, electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ends of two different polar molecules. Hydrogen bonds incorporates a little dipole-dipole in it, but it also incorporates a little bit of what's kind of resonance features in here as well. Ox hydrogen shifting its allegiance between who it happens to be bonded with at any particular moment. This is one of the reasons why water can actually tear itself apart. Water is actually 10 to the minus 7th molar hydronium ions. And this happens when the bond breaks completely between the hydrogen and this oxygen, and you form a coordinate covalent bond with this oxygen instead. 
Hydrogen bonding is what makes that possible. And hydrogen bonding is what makes a dissociation of acids possible. Because the hydrogen from the acid can then coordinate covalent bond with the oxygen of another water molecule, forming this hydronium ion. But that's for another day. I hope this answered your question. If you have a question you'd like to see answered here, just email the question to askrosengarten at gmail.com. Come on, what are you waiting for? Ask Rosengarten.